Hi, my name is JT Geary. Recently, I was invited to AWS reInvent to give a presentation on how companies could achieve continuous compliance through AWS Wall Architecture Framework. I want to share some of the highlights from that presentation with you. If you're not familiar with Wall Architecture Framework, this framework comes from AWS. It provides a set of best practices that every company should be following, no matter what type of workload you're running on AWS. It has five pillars, cost, security, reliability, performance, and operation excellence. And for the purpose of this presentation, we'll focus on security. According to AWS uh, Wall Architecture Framework, security is composed of five different areas. Before I talk about these five different areas, let me briefly talk about NOPS. We develop NOPS to help companies achieve compliance with Wall Architecture guidelines not on one-time basis, but on continuous basis. Let's dive into these five areas. Number one is identity and access management. Number two is infrastructure protection. Number three is data protection. And number four is detective controls. And number five is incident response. Let's talk about the first area. Under identity and access management, there are some guidelines, and number one is protect your root account. You wanna make sure there's an MFA on your root account. Companies like Netflix actually go as far as locking their MFA in a safe somewhere, because you wanna make sure there's security on the main account, and if you have multiple accounts, you should explore something like AWS organizations, because with AWS organizations, you don't need multiple root account. You can just add additional account to your master account. So once you have your users with MFA, you wanna make sure that you don't have any inactive keys. First of all, try not to use keys if possible, but if you have to use keys, you should monitor keys to make sure there aren't any inactive keys. So in NOPS, we allow you to set expiration date. So basically, let's say if your engineer has not used, a, used the key for a day or a couple of days, you can get notified right away. So you can delete that key uh, to make sure that there aren't any uh, inactive keys. If you take one thing away from this video, I highly recommend that you have a good automation and monitoring around inactive keys. You also want to make sure that all the users you're creating, you're managing their policies through groups. You should not attach any policies directly to IAM user. And in NOPS, we allow you to enable that rule so if someone does attach a policy to a user, you can get notified right away so you can take action. Let's talk about the second area, which is infrastructure protection. And there are some guidelines you can follow to make sure you're staying in compliance with Wall Architecture Framework. Number one is you want to make sure that you're not running resources in public subnet unless it's absolutely necessary. So you can run OpenVPN or VPN server in public subnets or bastion host, but try not to run any other resources in public subnet because you're exposing yourself to the world. And with NOPS, you can get notified real time if someone from your team launches a resources in public subnet, which is very helpful because you could take action right away. Another thing we notice while speaking to customers, there are some customers still running resources in EC2 Classic. If you're not familiar with EC2 Classic, if you created your AWS account a long time ago, it came with EC2 Classic because there weren't any VPCs at that time. So you're running in this giant VPC where all the other customers are running their resources as well. So as you can imagine, it's not very secure. So you wanna make sure that you're not running any resources in classic VPC. You should migrate them to regular VPC now. And through NOPS, we give you real-time warning. If you do have an old account, you get notification right away if any of your team members launches any resources in classic VPC. There are other things you can do to make sure your infrastructure is well protected. So for example, you can use 
AWS Web Firewall, which could help you to make sure you're protected against common vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting and SQL injection. So the third area is detective control. You want to make sure you have basic audit trail set up for your account. So for example, you should have CloudTrail enabled on all your accounts. Uh, you want to make sure you have AWS config enabled on all your accounts. It provides you audit trail to see what really happened if there were issues in your accounts. So in NOPS, we allow you to get real-time notification if one of your team member disables CloudTrail or Cloud Config. That way you can make sure that you have the right audit trail and visibility into your all your accounts. Now, let's talk about the data protection. There's some guidelines you can follow that can really make your infrastructure more secure. So for example, if you're using S3 buckets, most of the companies do, you want to make sure that you don't have public access to all. You don't have right access to, to all. And if that were to happen, you want to make sure you get notified right away. In NOPS, you can enable rules where you can notify the right people if you have a bucket that someone creates a public access all policy. Second thing you want to make sure, if you're, you're running a workload which requires encryption for data at rest, you want to make sure you're enabling that. For example, you should enable encryption for data at rest for RDS and EBS volumes. And these are some of the rules you can enable in NOPS so you, you and your team can get notified right away if there is an issue where someone launched a resource without encrypted volumes. So the last area, of the security pillar is incident response. You wanna make sure that you have some good guidelines in place if you were to get hacked or if there were security issues, you can respond to it very quickly. So one of the things that we recommend is making sure you're using automation like CloudFormation. And in CloudFormation, you can make sure that you're tagging the resources. And AWS calls this like a clean room because you wanna make sure all the resources are accounted for. Most of the time we work with companies where they are resource running and they've been running there for a year and people are scared to shut it down because no one knows who launched it. So you wanna make sure that there's good practices in place to make sure all the resources are tagged. In NOPS, we allow you to monitor if there are resources which are not complying with your tag policies. So some companies might want to make sure that all the resources that are getting launched have department tags. So you can do all kind of different monitoring for tagging to make sure all the new resources are, which are provisioned are aligned with your policies. I hope you found this video helpful. Please note that this is not intended to be a complete list, but this is a good starting point. And I hope you recognize the value of NOPS, how you can use NOPS to achieve continuous compliance with AWS Wall Architecture Framework. Thank you.